Alright, so today we have this program that needs a name and a register code to be used, and we're gonna hack it. We're gonna be cracking a program that was made to be cracked legally as a challenge, and talking about computers along the way. Hopefully this video will make sense and be at least a little entertaining, but yeah, let's head right into it. Today we're gonna be trying to crack this program, I guess it's called Lafarge, and yeah, let's just check out what it does. So it looks like it asks us for a name and a license key to gain access to the program, and let's just try something like Nang and don't pick your nose friendly reminder and yeah so it doesn't work uh, it also calls us a bad boy for some reason but we can't just take that all right get your uh, gamer juice ready your uh, gamer chair reclined and your knuckles cracked because it's hacking time <laughs> Suck. so when programmers write software they write it in what's called source code and this is code that humans can understand this source code is pretty much just a list of instructions for the computer. It's kind of like when you have a friend and you're reading them instructions on how to build a chair, but in this case, instead of a friend, it's a computer. But the computer can't really understand this source code. Source code is stuff that's way too complicated for the computer to understand because all it can understand is ones and zeros. It's like if you tell your friend to now build the leg of the chair, but your friend just goes, 朋友是一个坚韧不拔的纪录片,在香港这座城市的设置. So instead, we have to give the computer simpler instructions, like a list of ones and zeros. And this is what a compiler does. Pretty much, it breaks down the human written source code into ones and zeros. And most of the programs on your computer are in this form of ones and zeros, which your computer can understand. So if we go back to our program, how can we figure out a register code for our username? Well, normally when programs have this in place, this is what happens. You go on their website, give them a username and like 50 bucks or whatever, and they'll pass your username through their algorithm to get you a register code. Then you take this register code, put it into the program, and the program will run your username through their algorithm and check if what you gave them matches what's actually correct. If they're the same, then you're good to go and have access. But if they're not the same, then they're pretty much gonna tell you to fuck off. So if we give the program Nang and don't pick your nose friendly reminder when the register code is actually 1010, then it'll tell us that we have the wrong register code. But if we give it Nang and 1010, then it'll check and see that we have the right serial key and let us in. But right now I actually don't know what the right serial key is, so we won't have access. Anyways, we're trying to crack this program and we can do this with some reverse engineering. So remember how we said that programmers write source code that's made into ones and zeros for the computer to understand? Well, there's actually an intermediate step between the two which is called assembly code. This is code that's understandable by the computer and kinda understandable to humans because it's really basic but not as bare bones as straight up ones and zeros. To go from binary code which is in ones and zeros which we're not going to be able to understand into assembly code which is somewhat understandable, we can use a program called a disassembler. What a disassembler does is turn binary code into assembly code. There's a ton of free disassemblers to use out there but the one that we're going to be using is called x64dbg. So if we just drag the program that we're trying to crack onto here and boom we got some sweet assembly code. This can be super intimidating at first, I know it definitely was for me, but trust me when I say that it's not that bad once you get familiar with it. So here we have the assembly code, which is just a list of instructions for the computer. And here we have what are called registers, and you know, they're kind of like registered sex offenders, like my uncle, uh, hashtag free uncle Kenny. But yeah, instead of storing little kids, these registers store data. And the bottom two windows are just the program's memory, and they're just chilling out. Yeah, that's about it. What we want to do is change the program to give us access even when we're not supposed to have it. So when we get the serial key wrong, it tells us, nope, that's not it, and calls us a bad boy. So we can go into the code and check out how we got to this rejection prompt. We're going to look at all the strings or phrases that the program has stored by going into search for all modules and string references. We see here that it stores, nope, that's not it, and honestly, we're already pretty close. We can jump to where this phrase is in the program and check the code out. Hmm, hmm. Yeah, okay, okay. So I took a look at it so that you guys don't have to, and let's just walk through what it does. So remember that this is just a list of instructions, and what it does is compare what's at memory spot 406549 and memory spot 406949. This is comparing the correct register key with the register key that we gave it, 
and if they're the same, then it's gonna jump to the instruction that lets us in. If they're not the same, then it's gonna jump to the instruction that doesn't let us in. So instead, what we wanna do is change this instruction to always jump to the instruction that lets us in. We can do this by changing the jump if not equal to always jump to spot 00412BE, which is the instruction that's gonna let us in. And then what we can do is save this new version of the program or our cracked version and try it out. Okay, so let's see if this works. Yay. Yeah, so pretty much it works. And this is a cracked version of the program where we change the actual instructions to let us in. But you know, on this channel, we always got to get good. So how can we make this better? Well, we would have to make a key gen or a key generator to make this work. And yeah, let's do it. If we look at the original program, it compares the correct key with the key that we give it, but the correct key is stored at memory spot 406949. And to be honest, uh, it could be either 406549 or 406949. I don't really know, but we're just going to go ahead and try 406949. And so we have the correct register code at this memory. So instead of printing out the phrase, you know, bad boy and nope, this is not correct. Instead, let's print out the correct key or whatever is at memory 40, fuck, what was it? It was 406949. Then we can just save this as a new executable program and try it out. And fuck, yeah, this is the key that we tried, which is not what we want, but it's really no big deal because we can just print out what was at the other memory spot. And yeah, just like that, now if you put in your username, you'll get the correct register key back. We just made a program that generates a valid key for any username, so we solved this challenge. And now, if anybody wanted to use this program and get access, they can do it without having to use a cracked version, because they can just use this key gen. Alright guys, so that brings us to the end of this week's video. If you guys want to try out any of the challenge programs, you guys can check out this website called crackmes.one. And it's pretty much just a website where people make these programs to be cracked. And yeah, they just post it there. And yeah, hopefully this video made sense. If you guys liked it, you guys can like, comment, and subscribe. And also you guys can hit me up on my Instagram. It's at notne. Alright, that's about it. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Are you kidding? No, I'm not. I just copped a fitty went and put it on my watch. Yeah, I could drop a milli, go and pop it on a stock, but I'd rather be a dick, throw it up and make them watch. Are you kidding? No, I'm not. Moving through your city with my coffee and a glide, bitch. Ask me, are you